promises. Well, as we have met with the prophets, the Lord has been saying to us a scripture over and over and over again. And it is come up higher. Say that. Come up higher. Come up higher. Listen. You know, many times, because of life circumstances, we start functioning on a lower level than God designed us to function. The cares of the world, things come in, and they begin to affect us. They can affect us physically. They can affect us emotionally. But I am here tonight to say, come up higher. And I tell you, all, many, many prophets are quoting Revelation 4, 1 through 5. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open. Where? Come on, preach with me. In heaven. Does anybody know their Bible in here? We're going to try that again. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here. And I will show you things which must take place after this. So I want you to notice some things about this passage. They're very pertinent for today because uh, uh, thematically uh, our particular group of prophets got the theme, the years of shaking and open doors. And for the past several years we have just been seeing contrast, contrast, where it's the worst of times, and the best of times, as Charles Dickens said. Now, notice this. This is very active. After these things, I looked. That's important. You see, because we have to learn how to come up higher, and we have to learn to look. Many of us, we're stuck because we don't really consciously think I am seated with him in heavenly places. And even among the prophetic community, sometimes I listen, and they prophesy the problems. They prophesy what Satan is doing. But when you get in the third heaven, and when you get high above it all, suddenly you know the strategy. You know what to pray. You understand the mind of God. And when you get his mind and you get what he's saying, when you look, all of a sudden, you see that door. You see the door. You know where to go. You have the revelation that you need. And it says... Come up here, and I will show you. And there was a door standing open in heaven. We need to go through that door. I believe one thing that it is is the door of revelation. The door of revelation. The Holy Spirit has been speaking to me. See, because I have noticed in the prophetic movement, sometimes when people prophesy, it's like, it's a done deal. We're toast. I mean, I have been reading some international prophets that are just saying over America, well, even if you get a godly president, you're still never going to be a great nation again. But I got in the heavens, and I said, that may be what Satan wants, but that is not what God wants for America. That is not his plan. So I'm coming up higher, and I'm listening for that strategy. You know, I was reading Jeremiah this past week, and, and uh, I'm, I was reading about Babylon. And all of a sudden, you see, because I consciously thought in my prayer time, I'm going higher. I'm, I'm going before the throne of God. I'm going to listen before the throne of God and see the door. What The door is really what to pray, how to access heavenly wisdom. Now remember, and I want to say this, this is very important. Remember Hebrews 4, 14 through 16, and I'll come back to what I saw. And it says, see that we have a great high priest who's passed through the heavens. Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. We do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize for our weaknesses, but at all points tempted as we are yet without sin. This is it. Let us therefore come, where are we to come boldly before? Before the throne of grace. 
There is grace in heaven. There, is, there are solutions in heaven. This year we prophesied that God was going to raise up solutionists. You'll love this, Wes. Good to see you. God is going to raise up solutionists that know what to do. God's going to raise up economic solutionists. You see, but it's when we understand that we get before the throne of God. I mean, there are times recently I've seen so much in the news. I just fell on my knees, and I, this is what I said. Mercy, Lord! Mercy! We don't know what to do. But I am here to grab mercy for America. I am here to grab mercy. I am here to pull down from heaven the grace that we need, the grace that I need, the grace that the intercessors need, because intercessors get weary. People waiting for revival get weary. But I want to tell you, the Lord is saying, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Somebody say amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to obtain it. We're going to obtain it. And, I, and then the Holy Spirit began to show to me he, this scripture, and I know you know it, but I just love it. James 3, 15 and 16. Um, oh, uh, oh, no, sorry, I'm going to start with uh, James 3, 17 first. But the wisdom that is from above, see that? See, above. We are seated with him in heavenly places far above principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and wicked spirits. But see, we can't pray from down here. We have to pray from up here. But our minds can get so clogged with the needs of the day and what is happening around us. But there is a refreshing that comes to us spirit, soul, and body. When we get up higher, the wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, yielding, willing to yield, full of mercy. We see that word again, good fruit. Without partiality, and without hypocrisy. But right before this, it says, the wisdom does not descend from above, that does not, is earthly, sensual, and demonic. From where envy and self-seeking exists, Confusion, every evil thing are here. Let's talk about kinds of wisdom for a moment. Number one, there's heavenly wisdom. That's our inheritance. You understand this? Not just for one person. Whether you need it for your business, whether you need it for your family, whatever you need, you can access it. Supernatural wisdom. I tell you, I'd come back to what I was talking about. I was, pre- I was reading in Jeremiah about Babylon. And I saw how God took out this mighty nation. And then I thought about Iran. And I thought, well, you can take out the government of Iran. We've been praying all kinds of things. But when I came up higher and I'm reading my scripture, I got a download. And the Lord says, pray that their enemies will take them down. I didn't even know Iran had enemies other than, you know, maybe us, where they they call us the great Satan. But there was an explosion that came after that prayer, and it was the Islamic revolutionaries that attacked Iran. Are you listening to me? Do you think God still has an angel that took out 188,000 Assyrians? Do you think God is the same God? How big is your God? He is a great God. He is a mighty God. He is a king of kings. He is the Lord of the host of heaven. He is the captain of the host of heaven. Hallelujah. Is there anyone who can believe? Is there anyone who say, I'm going to come up higher. I'm going to get mercy in time of need. My vision and my knowledge will be heavenly. There's earthly or human wisdom. Some people are wise. They have a lot of common sense. These are the kind of people you want to ask about things. But it's just because they've lived a lot of life. Probably made a lot of dumb mistakes. 
Anybody in that crowd? I am. Okay. And then there's sensual and demonic wisdom. Satan can give evil designs to people that can be very appealing. Look at the woke crowd. They think they are just. You see, they're a justice generation, these, these young people. And so they are appealed by a sense of doing justice. And they will do anything to fight injustice, but their thought life has been perverted. By those who are drinking from another well. Satan will give demonic revelation like he did to Jezebel to steal David's vineyard. You remember this, 1 Kings 21, I don't have time to read it all, but I'll give you just the highlights because you're so smart. I, can, I look at you and I can tell you read the Bible. Okay, and it came to pass over these things that Naboth, the Jezreelite, had a vineyard which was in Jezreel next to the palace of Ahab, king of Samaria. So, you, know, you know the story, the king wanted it, but, and he was all depressed, but Jezebel said, Oh, I can get it for you. Now, what did she do? Now, watch this. Because it was a demonic strategy, and it worked. And so, they put him before the people, and they first proclaimed a fast. I want to tell you something. There are unholy fasts that people in the occult do. And I'm not somebody that thinks everything is a demon, but I want to tell you there's a lot of occult activity going on right now. I wrote a whole book on it called Deliver Us From Evil. It's very pertinent. I remember, I remember um, a friend of mine uh, in, in uh, British Columbia led a guy to the Lord who was a high-level Satanist. And he began to weep after he accepted Jesus. And he said this. He said, I caused the breakup of so many pastors' marriages. He said, I went and planted fetishes all over Portland, Oregon, and Seattle, Washington. Now, I won't go in the history of Seattle, Washington, and the pastors, but these occult spells worked. And they, the, sometimes it was adultery or sometimes just divorce. And so she went with him, and he showed her where those fetishes were buried, and they dug them up. And broke those curses. I remember one time in Argentina, there was a, uh, you know, football or soccer as we know it, football team that kept losing and losing. And they asked a pastor of a mega church there, will you come pray? And he began to walk up and down the soccer field. And he finally said, dig here. And they did. And there was a fetish in the ground. They dug it up and destroyed it. And they began to win every game after that. See, I want to tell you, that was supernatural wisdom. We would call it a word of wisdom. God is going to give us the ability to flow in the gifts of the Holy Spirit on a higher level to get a word to know what to do. Well, you know, that was the thing about Iran. You see, I prayed for Iran. I have, I have people I know that are Iranian. And I have prayed for different parts of the world. But... I wasn't tapping in to the highest level of revelation. Now, every prayer does something. But you can pray a prayer that's like taking a rowboat to Cuba from Miami. Or you can take a jumbo jet, and you're going to get there fast. The Lord says to his people, I want you to sharpen your gifts. I want you to come up higher. I want to give you a download, supernatural wisdom of what to do. So we see what this happened with Jezebel. They took him out. Listen, they proclaimed a fast, and they seated him with high honor. You understanding this? Satan will do this. He doesn't mind if you go up and up and up because he's waiting till you reach a point because he's going to get you. And then we see this happen where 
this demonic unholy fast and two men scoundrels came and the scoundrels witnessed against him in the presence of the people saying Naboth has blasphemed God and the king they took him out the side of the city and stoned him with stones so that he died in my book possessing the gates of the enemy I write a story I have received a letter testifying of this that actually Peter Wagner sent it to me that said uh, a pastor was sitting on an airplane next to someone that was obviously praying. And the pastor said to them, well, I am a pastor and I pray. And that person looked at him and said, oh, you've got it wrong. I'm on an unholy fast to take down pastors just like you, and I have to return to my work. We have to understand the ways of God. We have to be discerning in the spirit realm. I want to tell you something that's going on that's really causing people to suffer right now is word curses. Word curses. Christians writing against other Christians and speaking. I tell you, one day I was feeling so oppressed and I was just walking around our office and the Lord said, do you know how many people have written articles against you, preached against you on various things like that? And those are curses. And they've sinned it against this ministry. They've sinned it against your family. And I just said, in the name of Jesus, I break those curses. And I'm not receiving them anymore. And boom. I was with him. I had emotions. I could feel. We are called to be the head and not the tail. We are called to be above and not beneath. We are to be blessed in the city and blessed in the field and blessed in the fruit of our womb. And I tell you, it's the curses. When the curses come, they steal your land and they steal your, your property and things happen. And I want to say, we are going to break that off the United States of America. We are called to be a blessed nation that follows God. And this is why when we met, in Dallas recently with 200 prophets from 32 nations. And the Lord gave us a word. I'm calling you to pray in a wartime president. And we need wartime watchmen and women. We need wartime intercessors. And God says, I'm going to show you how to do it. Because if we don't have that, the word was, our enemies will see us as weak. And this third world war... The hand of God in our prayers have just been staying that, but the enemies will see they can take us over. Hey, you know it's true. So what do we pray? God, give us a wartime president. God, give us a president that our enemies will fear. I was, a minute ago I was praying. I was sitting there in worship. And I just read something that talked about 15,000 immigrants. I think, I don't know what they call it, the end of poverty or something, are marching for our southern border to come into America. I was reading that 22 million illegal immigrants live in the U.S. now. And we're not going to just be able to deport 22 million people. So the Lord said, pray for them, Cindy. Cry out. Can you imagine... 22 million people accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. We're either going to pray and overtake him in intercession, or they will overtake our nation, and they will have it. But the Lord is saying, come up higher. Come up higher. Don't you think God has a plan? Isn't it true that the word of God says that that God will turn everything for our good. This is a time to read the news and say, God is turning everything for my good. Right now, at this very moment, God is turning everything for the good of the United States. There are hundreds of thousands of people praying for America. And we've got to have wartime intercessors. It's time for the bridegroom to come out of the bridal chamber. You know in the time of Christ that the bridegroom and the, and the bride, they got a year. They didn't go to war. They didn't do anything. But that's not what God is saying. Listen, it's not, not time to lay on the floor and soap. It's time to stand on your feet and go to war. 
And this is the word of the Lord. And this is what God is saying. Now I want to talk about Daniel a moment. Daniel knew how to access heavenly wisdom. Probably if we study the passage in Daniel where it talks about um, it talks about how the king had had a dream, but nobody knew what the dream was. And they were going to all be killed. This is Daniel 2, 17 through 28. Then Daniel went to his house and made the decision known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, that they might seek mercies. You hear that word, mercy? That they might seek mercies from God of heaven concerning this secret, so that Daniel's companions might not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. That's kind of where we are as a nation, isn't it? Look what Daniel did. He knew he had to get prayer help. He knew that he was in covenant with some people. And he knew that if they prayed together, God would do something miraculous. It's called mercy. Mercy drops round us are falling. We've got to have it. And there is such a great mercy knowing we can access hidden wisdom. We can access from God by coming up higher. And so what did this, God reveal the secret to Daniel? How? In a night vision. God's night vision trumped the king's vision, and God showed him what to do. Do you think God can do that today? He isn't the great I am. Well, I was. He's the great I am. God wants to give us dreams. He wants to give us strategies. He wants to show us what his mercy can do. And I want to say, is there anybody here besides me that's praying for America saying, God have mercy upon us? Reminding God of his covenant. Is there anyone else? I want to say, you pray as if you're the only one. You take this before the throne of God. You take this so seriously because that's what a wartime watchman does. Clap your hands. Coming up higher means... I wrote this, to set yourself in a place where you can hear God purely. There are many voices speaking to us today. And they agitate the human soul. So we're going to have to pray, but not only pray, we're going to have to fast and pray. God wants us to fill our minds with himself. Isaiah 58, you know, the 6, 8, and 9. Is not this the fast I've chosen? To loose the bonds of wickedness, to undo the heavy burden, to let the oppressed go free, that you break every yoke. There's a lot of yokes that need to be broken. Then your light shall break forth like the morning, your healing shall spring forth speedily, and your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and I will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. Hallelujah. And look at this. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger. I tell you what, gossip is like an elixir to the body of Christ right now. Don't shout me down because I'm preaching so good. I mean, I cannot believe how many people love to drink the elixir of gossip. And you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like checking myself. I'm trying to check myself. Sometimes, you know, as a leader, you have to call... Sin, sin. You have to do certain things. But there are people that are going to want you to be drawn into a web if you're not careful. And I don't know. I cannot tell you I do that perfectly. I'm trying to figure it out as a leader. Because sometimes you have to blow the whistle. Sometimes you have to say the truth. Amen. 
I prophesy to you that there is wisdom waiting for you before the throne of God. I prophesy to you, God will not leave you comfortless. I prophesy to you, you are not forsaken. I prophesy to you that, that, that your Father God wants to have time with you. And as you come up higher, and as you go up, you're going to see the door that is open in heaven. You're going to see the reason why God has 24 elders in heaven. Because I believe there's counsel in heaven because the Bible calls them elders, so they must be elders. And I prophesy to you, God is bringing covenantal relationships together who can form prayer councils that when you pray with these people, God will reveal himself on a higher level than you can ever imagine or dream. And God has begun to show you how to break the strongholds over your family. God is going to begin to show you how to break those strongholds over your finances. As you look, you're going to see the door because there's a great, an effectual door open in heaven. Stand to your feet. That's all I got to say. Hallelujah. Now I want you to close your eyes a moment. The Lord wants you to come up higher. He wants to give you wisdom that is from above. But you have to practice it. You have to practice getting in the presence of God. You have to practice seeking his face. So lift your hands. Father God, I thank you for your people this night. Lord, we believe the words for revival for South Florida and Florida. We believe these words. I prophesied so many words over Florida of the great moves of God. But I also prophesy tonight over Buffalo, New York, and the Lord says I'm going to bring a great revival to Buffalo, New York. It is going to shake the whole city, says the Lord. I am getting ready to do greater than you can imagine. I'm going to expose corruption in the city government. I'm going to kick it out, says the Lord. I'm getting ready to bring a coalition of pastors together that pray, and God uses them so powerfully before the throne. Can I get an amen? So, Lord, anoint your people to obtain mercy in the time of need. And let's just shout out mercy, can we? Mercy, Lord! Let's cry over for the United States. Come on! Mercy, Lord! We need mercy! The snake is at the door! The snake is at the door and wants to take this nation. But we say, no! Say it again! No! Say it again! No! Let's clap our hands and shout to the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah.